Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is uh, Condo Insider. This is the show where we talk about uh, condominiums and things that affect uh, condominium owners and people who work in the industry. And today, our show is about uh, the repeal of H Hawaii Revised Statute 514A. And we have with us today, uh, as our guests, we have Dathan Choi and Carol Richler. Uh, from the DCCA, the State of Hawaii DCCA uh, Real Estate Commission. And uh, Dathan and Carol, can you tell us um, a little bit about yourselves and what do you do at the DCCA? Um, so I'm a condo specialist and I handle mostly the registration process, um, some of the governance issues as well, and some of the legislation. And um, by the way, thank you very much for having <laughs> us on your show. Yes. Um, I'm Carol, and I'm a senior condominium specialist, and so therefore I get to work a lot in governance, education, outreach, rules writing, and some having to do with the registration of developers of the ports. Also legislation. Oh yes, and lots of legislation. <laughs> okay, and in fact that's why you're here today, because last year the legislature passed a law that repealed Chapter 514A. Uh, in, uh, and why don't you tell, what is 514A? Okay, well, Chapter 514A is a statute that applied to condominiums that were formed prior to July 1st of 2016. Oh, wait, 2006. Oh, 2006, Six. thank yeah. you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and um, just to explain a little bit, this relates only to condominiums. So condominium is actually a form of ownership it's not you know, a structure like a high rise, a low rise, a single family dwelling, um, a lot of, of slip and harbor. Those, those could all be condominiums, but it, it's merely a form of ownership. And it has nothing to do with like use, land use, zoning, subdivision, or anything else like that. It's just a form of ownership. And actually to form a condo is uh, fairly straightforward process set forth in the statute basically by filing a declaration and the bylaws, bylaws and, and the condominium yeah. map with either the Bureau of Conveyances or if applicable the land court and that forms the condo. Now not all condos are registered with our office, the Real Estate Branch and Real Estate Commission. Some folks just form a condominium for whatever purposes, purposes of ownership, or they wanted to get a loan, or something like that, but they never register it because they don't intend on selling the condominium. But where this repeal is very important is for those that are meant for eventual sale. And that's why this is a very relevant one. So if the condominium was formed and registered before July 1st, 2006, then it is 514A is applicable, and that is the one that's being repealed. Now, if the condominium was formed after July 1st, 2006, then it's 514B, like boy, and um, that one is not being repealed. So that is why we wanted to come on today to just kind of explain um, about this. It relates to the sale. The only legal way to sell a condominium is through the statute and what happens is that the developer files paperwork for what they call a developer's public report and the point of that is disclosure you know protection of the public protection of prospective buyers and buyers and the commission wants to ensure that there's proper disclosures so that these folks are protected um, these, so they know what they're And these buying. reports that are filed, they, they, they are available online. You can look at them yes, online. Yes, yes. And we encourage, if, uh, if someone doesn't know whether they have a condominium, please look at our website. And, and I you think can, the, you can we've, ascertain, we've got it flashing now on the screen. Right, and they can ascertain whether they are a condo or not. Because remember, it's not what the structure looks like. It's the form of ownership. 
So that's the that's the important part. Why why is it being repealed? Why is the statute being repealed? My understanding is there was apparently some confusion about um, the part of the statute having to do with governance. That part shifted over to 514B while the other sections of 514A were still effective. But some folks you know, misunderstood and they thought the governance section of 514A still governed when in fact it had been supplanted. So my understanding is they decided to just get rid of 514A so everybody will be under 514B so that there if wouldn't you're a be condominium. confusion. If you're a condominium, not any other form of ownership. This doesn't right. affect cooperatives or, or any of those other forms of ownership. So who, do, who in fact is affected by the repeal? Who, I mean, if you're a condo owner, are you affected? Or are you, if, it's, if, if you're a renter, are you affected? I mean, who does it affect? So this should hopefully only impact a relatively small number of people, um, mainly being developers of 514A projects and people who inherited or gifted it from the developer. Say like your uncle was a developer and he made, made a project like 20 units and he gave one to your, to your brother maybe for essentially free as a gift and that gave, inherited back to, down to you you would be affected if the report was expired and, and inaccurate. So people who purchased from the developer or someone who purchased it from a previous buyer, from a previous buyer, so on and so forth, they should not be affected at all. And renters should not be affected at all. It's that relatively small set of developers and people who inherited or got it gifted from the developer. Except when we were talking before, you said that, you, I mean, your, your task now in the last couple of months is to notify these people who might be affected. Mm -hmm. And yes. so, and, mm -hmm. and before the show we were talking, you have sent out thousands of letters. Yeah. And yes, you've, we been, have. you've been uh, go, talking to various groups and notifying various groups like the city and county and, and title companies and lenders. And so, so we're not, I mean, talking about, you know, a hundred people. We're talking maybe a few thousand people that Poss might be as affected. Possibly. We don't keep necessarily track of who purchases it, um, but we have gone through some of the addresses and we have noticed more than we thought would be affected by looking at the developers who still own the units right. or people that were like trusts from one of the partners in, in the developer. Yeah, so, our, our concern, I think, is um, especially for um, where they've used perhaps as a state planning device, mm -hmm. where it's like a two unit, three, four, five unit that, that perhaps the property is too small to subdivide, they decided to create a condominium and thinking that later on children, grandchildren, mm -hmm. well this is my, you know, my, their inheritance it's from me. So that there never was, um, you know, like the registration and the sale and, and that sort of thing. And, um, we have identified possibly about 3,500 of those five or less units. So we are also targeting those folks so that they will be aware yeah. that in the event that they want to sell, mm -hmm. the, the point was for the children to sell, their grandchildren to sell their inheritance as a condo, that um, they go through the appropriate steps now because the Otherwise, the, the consequence would be they couldn't sell the unit. So that means that if they inherited their units from Uncle Joe, the developer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this was a gift uh, and they didn't pay any money, that they may have troubles now. Right. After January 1 of 2019, if they decided they wanted to sell it, exactly. they might not be able to do so. Correct. Right, and so that's why we are trying to, through every medium possible let people know and we're targeting the group that we think might be might possibly have issues we don't know for sure but we want to try to let mm -hmm. them have the information so that they can take steps and there are steps that can be taken so that they are not put in that predicament mm -hmm. and and uh, so when if, if somebody wanted to take steps I mean, if they thought that they were in this uh, group of people that needed to take steps to protect their property interests, when would be like maybe the deadline for, for them to take action? 
Uh, we would prefer to have any any updates or registrations or applications for the update to a public report by August this year. Um, so and August we, is not far to, away. No, it's, it's not. It's, <laughs> that's why we started notifying last <clears throat> year. Yep. So it's only like six months away. Mm -hmm. And so that means that um, uh, if there is anybody out there, I mean, first, if they, you want them to contact, uh, maybe check the uh, website. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, and make sure that, you know, they are uh, a condominium mm -hmm. that's on the website. Mm -hmm. And then they can contact you at the number that's showing on, on, on the screen right now. Uh, five eight six two six four four. Right. And talk to we someone. Have, and, we you also, have a, and you also we have, have a brochure. brochure on it online. We have the FAQ on it online, and we also have a commission memo online available mm -hmm. with the information. And of course, we're available to to discuss you know the various options. Perhaps if it's a developer, and I've had contact from one. Uh, it was actually a seventeen unit, but they still owned all the units. And they were like, you know, what about this repeal? And like in the case, that's actually simpler because the developer still owns all the units. So in their case, they could just sell the whole thing, you know, let somebody else deal with it, or they could do a bulk sale to another developer, or because it was before 2006, then they could update their filing, their report, their developer public report that's on file, and then under the legislation, there's a safe harbor provision. So if they are updated, they're active and they're accurate, it'll just sail right through. Mm -hmm. And the fourth option, of course, is just to go with 514B, just file as a 514B. So that means that they would have to file another public report? Yes. And, and, and what would happen to the previous report? It would just expire? Uh, if, so maybe we should go over the methods. Go ahead. Um, there, if you update your 514A project, so you're active and accurate, you will automatically get carried over into 514B and you won't have the issues of not being able to sell. Um, the one issue with that, the way they wrote the safe harbor is if you do have material pertinent changes, you do have to file an amended B report. That was the deal where you get carried over, but if you update, you have to go into the new system. Well, you know, talking <clears throat> to, to the, the listeners, I mean, uh, to a lay person, what, what, what do you mean by safe harbor? Um, what is a safe harbor? Can handle this? <laughs> oh, well, a safe harbor is a provision of the law that whereby there could be a much smoother transition. Um, so there are a couple of preliminary steps, at least in this case, which is ascertain, okay, my, my report is active. It's not expired. Check, right? And then look and say, okay, is my report accurate? And they say, yes, check. Then by operation of law, it just transitions over without that person having to do anything about it. It's just, just, just by operation of law. But they have to fill out the form. Um, there, there's no form. They just no. have to check on their own report saying, Am I, do I meet the requir requirements to be automatically transferred? And it's just automatic. There's yeah. no form. There's nothing that has to be filed. But it, the onus would be on that person say, is this an active report? And how is do it you accurate? Determine, how do you determine it's an active um, report? You can look on our website under our database, and then you find your project, and you open up the PDF, and it will tell you when the report expired. So that tells you, am I expired, am I not expired? So, you so if you're not expired by January 1, 2019, that means you're active and you don't have to do anything. Correct. Right. Yeah, I'm just, I'm presuming there's no material changes. Yeah, yes. but it'll just slide right on over, no fuss, no muss. Like, nothing happened. <laughs> But but they have to they have to actually go in and check to make sure yeah. or have somebody knowledgeable go in and check to make sure that their report is active uh, and there are no material changes that have to be made and then that means that they don't have to do anything right, right. and that would we encourage that that'd be a really good idea just to just to make sure so that you know once the repeal happens that things won't get complicated yeah. for them. Okay, well, why don't we take a break right now, mm -hmm. uh, and what, when we come back, we're going to be talking about in the details on, you know, how uh, people can protect themselves so that, you know, they don't lose their investment in these condominiums that they now own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. 
Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're, we're back now with our guests, uh, Dathan Choi and Carol Richler from, from the DCCA Real Estate uh, uh, Commission. And we're talking about the repeal of 514A. And uh, in the first part of our program, uh, you talked about uh, the statute and why it was being repealed and who would be affected and what steps they could take. Uh, so, so they they would be you know to protect their property so that they could sell it someday if they wanted to, uh, because you've said in the first part of the show that if they don't take steps to uh, to get do their safe harbor or do a transition, and we'll talk about the transition, that they may not be able to sell their property, right? Exactly. That's the that's the downside. Now, for the you, you were talking earlier about you know the, the the people they could go onto the website and check and see if they were registered and to see whether or not their regist their registration was active. And one thing we were talking about during the break is maybe one thing they should do is to hire a consultant to look and to give them an opinion that they don't have to do anything. Well, that's that's always. A wise idea in a, in a matter that can be complex is to hire a professional. That's mm -hmm. very true. And so, what if they don't hire a professional, and it turns out that they're re they they do it themselves? They go online, they find their report, and they see that it hasn't expired, and they say, "Oh, good, I don't have to do anything." What ha I mean, what 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 could be the downside later on if you know after January one, uh, twenty nineteen, if for some reason that report is inaccurate. Well, if they attempt to sell it later on, um, again, it always relates to the, the protection of the prospective buyers. So there could be several ramifications. Um, ultimately, they might not be able to sell it because the buyer will find out that you know the financial company will not you know, loan the money to do it. I, the federal government's very sensitive in their loan program to this issue. The title companies are very sensitive to the, you know, this issue as well. And if somehow it did get carried through, then the seller could be on the hook to the buyer for all the inaccuracies in the sale. So it would behoove somebody who thinks that they are, you know, they might be subject to the repeal to hire a consultant. Now, who, what kind of a consultant would they hire? An, a, a, an engineer uh, or an architect? Presumably, they would hire the attorney that did their initial report initially, because that attorney would be familiar with what the initial disclosure but let's, would be. I mean, <clears throat> some of these condominiums were done in the 70s, yeah. and you know, and maybe their attorneys are retired or, or you know, they've passed, passed away, mm -hmm. right? So, so then you just hire any attorney or an architect, or who well, would you hire? If I was doing it personally, I would look up a condominium, you know, attorney. Mm -hmm. Like a real estate be, attorney. Yeah, yeah. The, the, personally, you know, if I would do it, because that would be someone familiar with the condominium laws and, and, and the structure and how it's done. If you're not familiar with developers' public reports, um, it could be a little, little tricky. Okay, yeah. so, so you'd hire an attorney to uh, look at uh, your public report, to look at the statute, to, to look at the safe harbor, to make sure that they are in compliance and to get a letter from them. And, and that would be your recommendation to somebody who might be affected by the repeal. Exactly, because of course, um, the real estate branch itself cannot give legal advice. And so we will help people as much as we possibly can, but we are not allowed to give that legal opinion or advice 
to to the person. We can direct them to the sites. We can direct them to the statute. But and um, and you have the documents because you you are the registry, right? Where all the public reports are yes. filed. Yes. And so they are all online. And so they can come onto your website or call you, and you can direct them as to where to find it. Mm -hmm. And then they would go out and get their own uh, consultant to advise them on what they should be doing. Yeah, yeah, just to be sure. I, I think it would be good to try to, to make clear um, the repeal. If, you, if, a, if a condominium is a 514B, you know, after 2006, then this doesn't matter. So if, if, the so you know. yeah, if the economy was created before 2000, yeah. after then 2006. It, after 2006, this doesn't matter to you. You're, okay. you're fine. Everything is okay. If you're um, a 514A condo prior to yep. 2006, but and you look at it and your developer's public report is accurate and it's active, not a problem. Yep. It, it, and it has to be an active through January 1st, 2019. Right. Just right. because you're accurate or active now doesn't mean you'll be active then. The report will actually give you a date and it expires. And yeah. you want to make sure so that the date is, is at is minimum out. January 1st, 2019. <laughs> right. So and, and, and you were talking about material changes. Can you describe what kind of material changes might affect um, this registration? I mean, these well, condos, let's say, were created in the 70s and 80s. And here we are in 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. What type of material changes would would be affecting this property? Oh, okay, um, this is not a master list, so don't yeah. take it as a master list. But some included would be you change the boundary lines, um, percentage ownership <coughs> between owners. You built a house, you removed the house. Um, you did serious grading to your landscape, um, as in you like filled holes in. Any anything that would largely impact someone's material va or value of the property. Change common, yep. limited common. We got rid of the pool. <laughs> we put a pool in. Um, things like that, like significant changes to the land or the property itself. In other words, somebody, you have to look at your public report, and if their public report doesn't have a pool. Yes. The, and the fact that now you have a pool, that's a material yeah. change. Or what happened to your pool. <laughs> oh, exactly. and then so, so then you have to do, then what do you do? Do you file another report, like an amended report? to describe, to, to deal with the explanation as to what happened to the pool, or now we have a pool, and now we have a playground area for children, and we've done this and that. And so that's what you have to include in yeah. the new report. Mm -hmm. all, all the things that, that are considered material changes that affect maybe the value of the property mm -hmm. to the person who's yep. buying it. You don't want right. to have a report that says, unit A has 5,000 square feet when it really only has 3,000 square feet now. Make sure that would be a major material change that, right. would, that should so, be changed, that noted on an amendment or a supplemental report. Yeah, you, would, you would supplement the report. Um, if, the, if somebody looks up the report and it says it's preliminary or contingent, mm -hmm. then it, it matters to those folks. It has to, you know, the, the, that kind of report, but that's getting a little, little technical. A professional would know mm -hmm. the difference of that. But, um, and in another class of people too, I think that, you know, if all the units have already been sold, like you say they were built in the 70s or 80s and they've all sold, fine, there are five buyers down at this point, it, it, it doesn't, you know, wouldn't affect them. Uh, but if, you know, if they bought it at an arm's length transition from the uh, transaction with the developer or anything. And then I think you had mentioned earlier also, you know, like renters, this doesn't affect renters at all. Okay. Yeah. And then so, so in, in the transition, if they have to file uh, an a additional report, that would be something th their attorney that they hire to cons consult with. That attorney I, could do the additional yes. report. Right. Yes. And it would go through the normal procedure. Mm -hmm. We would check, you know, preliminary with our checklists and internal, and then it would go to the consultant and it would be regular procedure. Yep. That's why we don't want them all coming in at the last Just minute. The only difference with this is... Um, based on a prior 2007 law, you can actually transition from A to B without, without withdrawing or any registration. Um, How do you do that? Act 244 of Session Law 2007 actually details it. The problem with this act is it requires a A section that goes away in January 2019. So only can be done in this year. 
So the transition ends once the A, Chapter 514A is repealed. So they can do, under that uh, other law that was passed in 2007, they can file a report by the end of the year, which is December 31, 2018, mm -hmm. and that would be sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They can go from a Chapter 514A to a 514B and not and just slide, just right, slide through. right through, but now you're a B instead of an A, instead of just being treated like a, a B as you would. In so that sounds really complicated. It's, it's, it's somewhat complicated. Yeah, but I, I think we're trying to, the, the we don't want the worst case scenario happening, yeah. which is, you know, that they don't go through the safe harbor, they don't update, then they can't sell, and basically they would have to withdraw out of 514A because it's repealed, and then you'd have to refile entirely yes. new. And we're concerned, you know, if it's several generations down, that that might be a difficult process as far as obtaining the documents and because they what's wouldn't required. have the documents for yep. the original public report. Yes, and yeah. they may be missing documents and structures. The way the safe harbor and the transition work, you are actually exempt from a number of requirements of disclosure, which is way better than missing the boat entirely and having to do every single disclosure. So it I'm really scratch. is beneficial to either do the A, update your A report, or transition now to B and skip a, a number of somewhat onerous disclosures. Mm -hmm. So, but I guess, I guess the, the message that you want to get out there is, first of all, check the website and see if this affects you. Yes. And if it affects you, you go right out and you hire a consultant. Oh, could, Even if you think yeah. that you can just you know, slide through you know, even if you think, you know, you go on the website and say, oh, geez, my report hasn't expired yet, and I can just sign through. You, you really want to hire an attorney to, to, to assure you that you have complied and you don't have to do anything else. Well, generally, I mean, it is better to be safe. And for most of us, our most significant investment, most valuable thing we'll ever own happens to be, you know, your, your condominium, your house, or the case, and this applies to condominiums, but for a lot of us in Hawaii, it is the condominium. That is our major asset, so mm -hmm. it deserves to be protected. And so, you know, people need to take steps and not wait till the last minute, like don't wait till June or July to start thinking, oh, well, maybe I should look into this because I have six months before, you know, the law, uh, the, the section, you know, goes away, it gets repealed. Mm -hmm. By then, it's almost too late. Yes, there is a process, and it can be somewhat timely, um, lengthy in time. So the more timely people are in submitting their changes to our office, the better, because we only have a certain number of consultants, and they cannot handle thousands of these. To come in at the last uh, minute. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah last you get a whole bunch of, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, of applications to review on July 31st. It's a good, uh, uh, a lot of people may not get their reviews completed. That by is, the end of the year. That it's is a not a matter of like when it's postmarked because that's not the way no, the law is written. Right. It's just automatic, disappears, you know, January 1st. So even if people think, we got it into the office mm -hmm. by December 31st, <laughs> it, it doesn't, it's, it's not done by the postmark date. It's, right. it's, it's a hard deadline. Well, you know, we're running out of time. So, you know, I'm so glad you guys came mm -hmm. and uh, shared this uh, information with us. But now, you know, people have to go onto the website. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes, please. Go onto the state website, and there's a phone number there uh, to find out if this affects them. And if they, it affects them, they should take action now, mm -hmm. right? Yes. yes. And thank you very much for, you know, c coming today and sharing your message with us. And for you listeners out there, please join us every Thursday at 3 p.m., for another episode of Condo Insider. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.